Hello, everyone, and welcome back to week seven of Cup of Java. And today we are going to be studying neural networks. I'm sure you all have heard about neural networks. Um, it's there in the news all the time, especially these days. Um, but you might also be wondering what exactly are neural networks and why are they so important in society today? So that's what we're going to be discussing. If you've never heard of what a neural network is, I would highly recommend you go, you pause this video and you go and search up neural networks um, and see what you can find in the daily news. It will give you a good background to this topic. So what exactly are neural networks? Neural networks are a machine learning process that uses interconnected nodes or neurons in a layered structure that resembles the human brain. It allows computers to make intelligent decisions with limited human assistance, so they can learn and model the relationships between inputs and output data that are nonlinear and complex. In short, it teaches computers to process data in a way inspired by the human brain, mimicking the way biological neurons signal to one another. Once they are fine-tuned for accuracy, neural networks are powerful tools and allow us to classify and cluster data at a high velocity, which is why they're so important in society today when we have such a plethora of data um, at our disposal. So what exactly are they used for? They can be used for many industries, not just including marketing, medicine, and finance, but basically anything that you can think of neural networks can be implemented in. It can also be used in specific ways, such as computer vision, which is extracting information from images and video, speak, speech recognition, natural language processing, and recommendation engines. And we'll be talking a little bit more in depth as to what types of neural networks can be used for um, to implement each of these. One example that probably a lot of you know is Amazon Alexa, which uses a two-step scalable and efficient neural shortlisting re-ranking approach to find the most relevant response to a user's question. So again, most things you can use neural networks for if you have a lot of data. So how exactly do they work? Simply put, neural networks have an input layer which is information from the outside. A hidden layer, layer, which analyzes the output of the previous layer and passes it on to the next layer, and an output layer, which gives the final result in a single or multiple node. As you can see here, this has three, the simple neural network has three layers, one input layer, one hidden layer, and one output layer. Each node is basically its own linear regression model composed of input data, weights, bias, and output, and an output. And the hidden layer divides the input space into regions with softer boundaries and uses this thing called an activation function, which is a formula to help switch a neuron on or off um, to produce outputs with its intake of weighted inputs. So a deep neural network ar architecture has several hidden layers and can theoretically map any input type to any output type. So do you see, if you look at all of these different lines crisscrossing over here, any of these inputs can be mapped to an output through these different hidden layers. But the downside is that it needs much more training as compared to other machine learning methods. And we'll talk about um, what exactly these two, um, what exactly use these uh, network architectures in the next slide. So here are three basic types of neural network um, that are used most frequently. The first is a feed forward neural network. And this is probably one of the simplest to understand and also the simplest to implement. It processes data in one direction, from the input node directly to the output node. So there's no backpropagating. Every node in one layer is connected to every node in the next layer. And it uses a feedback process to improve the predictions over time. So this can be used for simple classification, face recognition, computer vision, and speech recognition. And the advantages are for, um, for someone who's coding this, it's less complex, it's fast because it's only one-way propagation, and it is very responsive to noisy data. So noisy data is a data with a lot of outliers and 
um, extremas, and it's very responsive to this type of data. The disadvantage is that it cannot be used for deep learning because it's it only processes data in one direction. Backpropagation algorithm uses corrective feedback loops to improve their prediction. Data flips from the input node to the output node through many different paths, but only one path correctly maps input to the correct output and finds by making guesses and adjusting. And this takes a little bit longer than the feed for neural network because you have these different um, these different paths that you have to go through. Um, and the last one, and the one that I'm the most familiar with, are the convolutional neural networks. And these are basically hidden layers perf that perform specific mathematical functions, such as summarizing or filtering called convolutions. So these are useful for image classification, image processing, uh, computer vision, speech recognition, and machine translation. And the advantages are it's, it can be used for deep learning with very few parameters, and there are less parameters compared to fully connected layers, such as in backpropagation and FIFO or neural networks. The disadvantage is, uh, is that comparatively to these other two, it is very complex to design and maintain, and it is also comparatively slow of course, depending on the amount of hidden layers. So here is a quick, is a really good way for you to test out how neural network work, neural network works in a simple way. So Google, as you can see here, Google TensorFlow has a bunch of ways to mess around with neural networks. So you can change the type of data that you wanna use. So as you can see here, the ratio of training to test data. So the amount of noise, remember when I was talking about noise in the data, how there can be multiple outliers. So you see how as you increase the noise, the data gets more mixed together. Your batch size, of course. Um, this is your input layer, um, your hidden layers, and you can increase the number of hidden layers or the number of neurons or nodes in your hidden layer, and of course your output. Um, and you can always mess around with this, and you can also mess around with all of these things. So this is an activation function like I was talking about before. So here they have tan, sigmoid, linear, and a bunch of other ones. Um, and you can either choose classification or regression, which we also talked about in previous videos. Um, so if you don't know what that is, I would recommend going back and watching before you do this so that you kind of understand what this all means. Um, and I would highly recommend this. It's very simple to use um, and it really explains a lot. And if you scroll down, you can find more instructions to if you want to learn. Um, about neural networks and deep learning. Um, and you can also find um, the people who made this. And um, you can also look at the TensorFlow library. So this is a very cool resources. Link is linked in the slideshow. Um, so I would recommend going to the slideshow, clicking this link and playing around with it and kind of figuring out um, how your output changes based on everything else that you change. So I would keep some things constant and change other other features, um, not features like this feature, but features like the learning rate and the regularization rate and the problem type. Um, I would do, and I would change and see how exactly it affects your, um, your output. So, So that will be all for our lesson today. Thank you all so much for tuning in to our week seven of AI with Cup of Java. And I'll see you guys next week. Have fun with neural networks.